Good morning, fifth grade students. Um, we're going to continue with the um, learning of our heart and how blood flows through the heart. So just a quick review. Here's our heart. Um, and we have the two top chambers. We have our atrium and then we have our bottom chambers. We have our ventricles. And then in between, we have these valves that are constantly pumping blood. On this side over here, we have it uh, pumping from the lungs. Um, and then we want it to come back into the heart oxygenated because as it goes to the lungs, we want it to come back oxygenated. So we can see it's going from the atrium through the valve here down into the ventricle. And then once it's in the ventricle, it's pumped up into the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary is another name for lungs and it goes out into the lungs so that it can get oxygen, comes back through the atrium ventricle and then back up through the aorta as oxygenated blood um, into the rest of your body. Now, as a part of this, um, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit through this video. Uh, we have what's called your pacemaker. One part of your heart that acts as the control center is called the pacemaker. And this is this small group of cells that make sure your heart beats at a steady pace. Your pacemaker cells, they send this electric current. You can see this electric current moving through here. Um, and this electric current causes your heart to contract. And these cells set your heart's pace or the number of times that your heart needs to beat. See how it's sending it through what we call the AV node. Um, you can see the electrical current, it's telling your heart to beat at a certain pace so that your body can get the perfect amount of oxygen that it needs. Your body gets enough oxygen from the blood that your heart pumps around your body. And your pacemaker, and you can see the different electrical currents going through the heart here, your pacemaker constantly receives messages from your body about how much oxygen your body needs. Now, why do you think your body needs oxygen more in certain circumstances than it does in other? Okay, right, so when you exercise, your body, your pacemaker will adjust your heart rate to match the amount of oxygen that you need. Think about that. As you're running around, your heart beats faster, right? When we did our lab on um, Friday, I had you guys exercising for 15 seconds and then 30 seconds. And your what it looked like on your Google Forms is that most of your heart rates went up the more that you exercised. So your pacemaker was telling your heart to beat faster with, and you were breathing harder, correct? If your pacemaker wasn't working, it wouldn't be beating the amount of times that it needs to beat. So let's think about this. Let's say that you're out on this trail run with this group of people, and when you're at the starting line, you may have warmed up and your heart's beating uh, kind of slow. You're probably at that resting heart rate that you were um, that you tested on Friday and, and Thursday. But as you start to run, you start to breathe harder, and you're breathing harder so that you can intake what um, what gas do you inhale? That's right, oxygen. And as you inhale that oxygen, remember we have the blood that's going to our lungs. It's picking up oxygen in order to send it to the rest of our body. Now, what do we use in order to run? That's right, we use our muscles. And our muscles need what? Oxygen, that's right. So our pacemaker makes our heart beat faster, which pumps blood faster around our body um, so that our Muscles can get the oxygen that they need. Now, sometimes when you run too hard, um, you breathe super, super fast. Now, let's say that your heart rate wasn't keeping up with how fast you were breathing. Um, a side effect could be that you would pass out um, or you would just not be able to run um, any further. Now, the electrical signals made by your pacemaker, they can be read by this special machine that's called an electrocardiograph, or EKG for short. Um, this machine records the electrical changes that happen during the heartbeat cycle. So up here you can see the lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub of the heartbeat. Um, doctors can use this information to detect any heart problems. 
Um, this one actually has an irregular heartbeat because you can see that the spaces are not completely even here. And this tells me that it's the pacemaker is off slightly because it's not beating at the exact same pace. Everyone see that? Let's review for a second. So again, we have our heart that is inside of our chest cavity. We have the four chambers, the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, and the atrium fill up with blood and they squeeze to pass it, the blood through the valves to the ventricles. Your right ventricle shoots blood to your lungs and then receives it back through the left atrium. Then we have our pacemaker, and again, the function of our pacemaker is that it sends an electrical current to the heart to keep it beating, and it sets the pace of your heartbeat. And again, remember, we have our electrocardiogram that can tell the pace of the heart. Uh, sometimes when our pacemaker is not working, um, we have to insert an artificial pacemaker, and this is a machine that doctors will put into um, a person's chest and will actually send the proper signals to the heart, to the AV node, in order to get it to beat properly. And this is one of those artificial pacemakers. It actually goes just under the skin, um, just below um, the left collarbone and they keep it tucked in there. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to my Weebly and you're going to, um, you're going to click on the, uh, the form under this recording and I'm going to post this picture in the form and you're going to answer questions one through 13 on the Google Forms and submit that um, and then number 13, if you can figure it out, I'm sure you can. I'm also going to post the pictures of your textbook pages so that you can go back and look through that as well.